everyone. I uh, wanted to uh, welcome everybody to uh, another webinar uh, from uh, Redline 13. Uh, this one is uh, titled The JMeter Talk with an Apache Committer and Real World, Real World User. Uh, but, but more than that, so let me just make an introduction for uh, Philippe Mouad uh, from Ubik that uh, this is more than just about an Apache Committer. Um, this is about someone who's uh, became a, did performance engineering, became a contributor, a committer, uh, created a business, became an author. Uh, very very pleased to uh, uh, have, have, get to know you. Uh, outside of just the webinar, we, we've uh, uh, been talking Redline and, and a bit for, for quite some time, uh, and just find you to be a very inspirational and uh, definitely an in depth person. Uh, around JMeter and performance engineering, so uh, no pressure. I know you're going to have some great stuff, um, but just wanted to welcome you to uh, to the webinar. Thank you, thank you, Richard. I'm happy to be on it. It will be my first webinar, so <laughs> I try to do my best. And... Yeah, uh, uh, you, uh, trust me. I, for, for everyone that's listening in, uh, uh, we will. For the webinar itself, uh, we of course will always make the the slides uh, available afterwards, the video available afterwards, and any feedback that folks have, uh, please feel free during the webinar. Ask questions in the question box. Raise your hand within the good webinar features. Feel free, uh, and feel free to follow up with us as well for any questions afterwards. So we're going to go into a few different topics today, uh, all focused around Core JMeter, and we'll uh, really like to start off start off with Philippe and and walk us through. I think for a lot of folks, even for myself, uh, who's been involved with open source, it, it's it's amazing to see how people get involved in different communities. So maybe you can start us off with how you got involved with JMeter, how you became a committer, and and kind of any insights you can give us on that. Okay, so uh, I started with Gmeter initially when I was a developer. Uh, we had an issue that uh, was uh, that was shown during the Nash HP Load Runner load test, and I had to reproduce it uh, in my development environment. And the only easy solution for it at that time was to use uh, Gmeter. So it started like this trying to reproduce an out of memory error. And uh, then uh, I started uh, within my career to do more performance load testing and uh, tuning. So I started using uh, Gmeter even at a higher scale, increasing the number of virtual users, starting with uh, intranet applications and then to uh, internet application e-commerce website so uh, progressively the load on Gmeter was getting higher and higher so uh, at that time uh, we started with uh, one of my colleagues ben Benoit to contribute uh, to Gmeter uh, with the stability patches and uh, performance, uh, performance fixes mainly in the distributed load testing uh, feature of Gmeter. Uh, so uh, we were kind of following the Boskut rule, uh, which says that uh, when you use something, you try to make it better at the end than uh, when you started using it. And uh, that's how it all started. Uh, in around 2011, I started, uh, I increased my activity on Gmeter because I was getting to use it more and more. And uh, it was funny, in fact, to, to contribute to an open source, not a usual business uh, project, with a different, uh, different uh, aims. Uh, one of the aims was uh, to, to give more feature to, uh, to open source community. Uh, we, we were kind of controlling the release. The release was not uh, due at a particular date. It could happen whenever the team uh, decided that quality was good enough. And it was a bit different from what you usually have in the business environment. So it was also interesting uh, in this uh, field. 
So after submitting a lot of patches on version 2.5 and 2.5.1, uh, the PMC of uh, Jakarta proposed to me to become uh, an Apache committer. And uh, at that time also, Gmeter became a top-level project. Initially, it was a Jakarta sub-project. In 2011, October, it became a top-level project which kind of uh, makes it uh, a more important project than it used to be and more visible. And, uh, and uh, since then, I've been very active uh, contributing to Gmeter with, a lot, with, with all the feature I needed during uh, the load test, the features that my customers wanted and didn't find. And uh, happily, I was not an alone contributing. Uh, since that time, uh, six committers joined the project, and we've released uh, nine versions. And uh, last year, with two, two other members of Gmeter, Antonio Gomez Rodriguez and uh, Milamber, French committers, we decided to start a book, and we published it uh, at the beginning of the year. Uh, it's called uh, Master G Meter from Load Testing to DevOps. So that's how it happened. That's great. Uh, yeah, and, 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 and just for folks that don't know the book, it covers quite a bit. And it also covers all the uh, different tools out there that integrate with JMeter. Uh, I know there's a section on Redline and, and so many different uh, vendors out there, and it covers uh, the guts as well. So it's a, a, a great journey, and, and and it seems like it was beyond just you. It was it was other people involved as well, and um, that's uh, pretty impressive. I, I know that uh, you know. I know that you provided uh, prepared some information about some some key metrics inside the community, and so maybe you can review and explain the importance of some of these metrics. Yeah, well, uh, these uh, metrics are extracted from a pro project called Scoot, and you can also find similar metrics on OpenHub. Uh, the first metric shows you uh, the activity of the project, and uh, as you can see, the project has been very active, uh, particularly last year, where you can see uh, a peak in the code uh, code. Uh, code source, a peak uh, in quant an increase, a big increase in the quantity of code uh, related to the introduction of a new feature called the report dashboard, which gives you a dynamic HTML report at the end of the result, at the end of the load test. You can also see at the top left the, the number of commits. You will see that the project uh, is, is very active all over the year with a peak uh, between December and May. It was uh, the preparation of the version 3.0. Uh, you can also see that there are around three active uh, committers per month and with a variation uh, when increases uh, during the release or pre-release periods uh, where we get to, to have uh, up to six committers. And uh, besides these metrics, uh, we had uh, happily also last year a lot of uh, GitHub contribution and pull requests on our mirror, uh, which was very nice. To, it was nice to see so many people contributing to Gmeter and making it better. So it encourages the team to continue working on it. Uh, we also had donation from uh, Ubic Load Pack, uh, which is my uh, and Ubic and Decathlon, which is one of our customer. Uh, it was very nice to see uh, also commercial companies sponsor big features in Gmeter and donate them to the open source community. And uh, in the second uh, metric, uh, if you get to next slide. Uh, before we get there, just out of curiosity, did, did you see did you see an impact um, when when GitHub when the code was made available on GitHub? Did you see an imp is that when you saw an impact in people submitting um, submitting code and pull requests? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure GitHub in, improves uh, community contribution. We clearly saw an increase in the, in the participations. Uh, previously, when you wanted to participate, you had to provide a patch at the Bugzilla. Nowadays, you, you provide a pull request on, uh, on GitHub, and there are many advantages of this. You can get uh, notes on your code. Uh, you can make the PR evolve. Uh, you get a lot of discussion in the GitHub. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, uh, it's a good, very good way to, to make people contribute. Uh, that's why also in the version 3.0, we made a, we, um, a special web page documenting how to contribute to the project uh, and how to submit to PR, what rules to follow, and things like that. And uh, uh, last year, we had around uh, 100 pull requests. Uh, where, which ranged from new features to core enhancements to migration to Java 7 syntax. And uh, in all fields, we had big improvements coming from the GitHub uh, pull requests. So, so in effect, the you know, active developers per month in here in terms of committers is, is bigger when you, when you take, is even bigger when you take into account the fact that pull requests come from a, a wider range of developers. Uh, sorry, Richard, could you repeat your question? I didn't uh, understand yeah. fully. When, now that you're getting code from pull requests, that's, th th those people aren't committers, but you're pulling in those commits. So the amount of people contributing code is more than just the committers on the Apache project. Yes, yes. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a read-only mirror. So at the end, uh, it's the contributor who will commit. But right. uh, clearly, uh, it's uh, it's easier, and the people can focus, uh, give and uh, have some feedback on their pull request. So it's as if they were contributing to the project. And clearly, when people contribute a lot, uh, the core team tends to propose to contributors to join the team and become committers. That's the way Apache works. It's based on uh, your activity on the project yep. it can be documentation, coding, uh, mailing list to work. Uh, so we're happy with GitHub improving this community. And so you were saying that there's here's some more metrics that I, I know you had cited in terms of uh, issues and tickets. Yes, the the next slide shows us that uh, we're we're trying to to make uh, as, as uh, to be very uh, rapid and reactive to to bugs and uh, enhancements uh, proposed by users, we we try to handle uh, the the bugs and enhancements within the week, uh, if possible within two or three days, uh, so that people are encouraged to to contribute bugs and things like that. Another metric that you, we don't see here and which shows a big activity on Gmeter com, in Gmeter community is the Stack Overflow mm -hmm. uh, uh, tag of uh, Gmeter, which has currently something like 6,000 questions and keeps increasing uh, with a lot of people contributing to, to it. So it's pretty nice to, to see this, uh, this activity around the Gmeter. Yeah, it's 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 an incredible community, and and it's it's a community that's been around for for a very long time, and has only become uh, only increased over time. And gets it's interesting how you know just thinking back to when uh, things like JMeter um, were, were first started, and how they've grown, and how the tools and and like everything from GitHub to Stack Overflow have only made these communities even stronger. So it's amazing to see it uh, growing like this because. It, it, it obviously has has something that people need and use every single day. Yeah. Um, and, and speaking of that, you've you've taken this. So you started as a developer and contributed and became a committer. Uh, the thing that impresses me most, because some people stop there, you you've taken it further and actually became created a product around pieces of this and took that to market. So maybe you could talk uh, a little bit about how you guys did that, why, and and, and what that meant. Yeah. 
Well, uh, as you know, today uh, there are a lot of products being built around Gmeter. Uh, you, you've built uh, Redline 13 and integrated Gmeter in it. Uh, there are many of your competitors that also provide a Gmeter on the cloud. Uh, recently, Microsoft also provided it as in, as, uh, in their Visual Studio uh, SaaS. And uh, lots of so Asta also has an integration. So this is very nice and uh, is in the cloud. Our approach was a bit different and was based on our needs in our uh, business. Uh, and it, it first started because we had a performance uh, load testing mission that, we, that was using a GWT RPC protocol. And uh, you trying to make a load test realistic with a standard G meter was uh, nearly impossible at that time because uh, the protocol is not uh, very human friendly and it's very difficult to, as you know, to correlate. Yep. I think all people here on the call know what uh, what correlation means. Uh, it, that's what makes your test realistic. And uh, correlation with GWT RPC was impossible. So uh, at that time, we didn't have a lot of solution. Uh, either we used uh, a commercial uh, solution, uh, and there was not a big offer. I think at that time, only NeoLoad had this uh, this solution, uh, but unfortunately, it was not affordable for our customer. Uh, and we wanted to. We were pretty sure it was possible to make something with Gmeter, and that's how it all started with uh, with this first GWT RPC plugin that we then uh, have improved and make it a real product that we distribute around the world currently. We have customers everywhere, in, uh, from uh, all continents, Australia, uh, US, uh, US, America, and uh, Europe, of course. And uh, this was uh, our biggest uh, first plugin. And uh, then, uh, with uh, on, on occasions, and depending on load test and, and uh, the, the requirements of project, we built uh, other plugins. Uh, to name a few, uh, Java serialization plugin, it was to load test a Spring remoting application, a Flex plugin to load test an Adobe Air mobile application, and uh, of course we built also JSON plugin because uh, JSON has become a, has become a standard since that time with uh, the, the microservices architecture with mobile, and it was really uh, a need to for Gmeter. First, uh, we, we, we were selling it, and uh, last year we donated it, and it's now part of uh, Apache Gmeter Studio, because we think uh, that Gmeter really needed a JSON support and uh, a, full, a fully blown solution for JSON. And, uh, yes, yes, Richard? I was going to say, that's, uh, that's awesome uh, from a contribution perspective, and it really it exemplifies how things get, how things evolve, you know, working with the community, growing that part into a business, but knowing when certain things, you know, can be put back into the community and certain things really aren't community driven, you know, uh, a flex plugin, uh, the GWT, th those pieces uh, sometimes make sense and sometimes don't. And I think it's very fair to build some of these above kind of the community services to to monetize and, and and enables you guys to continue working on the open source project. So it, it's a great balance between them all. And having been part of JBoss and Red Hat, I've seen so many different models form. Uh, and, and I think this this is a great example of, of a model that that's working and allows you to really contribute back to the community. And, and so I I need to steal your thunder. I know you guys just released a new uh, piece as well. Uh, yes, we released this week. Uh a new video streaming plugin for Apache Gmeter, and uh, it supports now last uh, draft of Apple HTTP live streaming and a new format, which is uh, which is very popular in the video streaming field, which is MPEG Dash. And you can uh, get more information on this plugin at uh, those URL. Yeah. Things just one things to note. 
our plugin is a player simulator and its particularity is that it allows you to scale a lot, much more users than you could do it with a real simulator, with a real player. So uh, our solution can scale also on the cloud thanks to our, your integration with our solution with Red, on Redline at a very cost-effective price. And uh, we're happy to, to be providing this to the community uh, in a commercial way, of course, but I think in a very competitive pricing uh, way. Yeah, and, and, and I was saying that, you know, it's great to see how you've grown this in, in, in the business aspect. And, and so, you know, Ubik, is, Ubik Load Pack, um, you know, has become both a set of those plugins, but I know that there's a, uh, you know, Ubik Load Pack is part of the, the bigger company. In, so I'm on this slide, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about the company. Uh, yes, well, Ubik in January uh, is a company which started as a development company, uh, and we we have now a full-blown offer, which ranges from the consulting field, where we select some frameworks for the customers, make some box, uh, proof of concepts, uh, to the development, we, we have a uh, uh, let's, we have a lot of work in the e-commerce business. Uh, we work uh, with Oracle ATG uh, framework, for example, and uh, build uh, one of the biggest uh, e-commerce websites, French e-commerce website. We also work for uh, big actors in the e-commerce uh, in France. Uh, we have also, of course, have a performance tuning. Uh, um, uh, what to say? We have a uh, big knowledge in performance tuning based on our knowledge of development. We, we're not a regular QA company. What we do is to use load testing to improve performances, tune platforms, uh, improve architecture, rework architecture, and that's, uh, that's our passion, I would say, and uh, let's talk the, the yeah. So let, let's, and I think this is a good point to switch to the next part of the uh, webinar. And let's, and I think people want to know, and, and so it was a great background, a lot of it, it, very interesting stuff around the community. But let's talk a little bit more about JMeter 3.0. And, and, and I know you have, and so for folks on the webinar, we're going to do a few things in here. And Philippe is going to do some demos within this. We'll be switching back and forth uh, during this process. Um, so I'm going to advance us past this, just more great stuff from the community. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about, you know, why don't you give us your take on JMeter uh, 3.0, and then we can dive into some of the particulars there. And, and for, for folks on the webinar, there, there's a lot of uh, technical aspects we're going to go into right now. Uh, including some demos, so much so that this is we're actually going to do this in two parts. Today we'll go through quite a bit of it, uh, but we probably have, we have enough content to do another deep dive into JMeter 3.0 even further and and futures uh, of of what's going on in the JMeter community. So we'll start off uh, right here, and I'll, I'll let Philippe take us through some of the uh, the the aspects of that. Okay, so. Uh... Uh, in May, we released version 3.0. As you can see, we changed our, our logo and we changed our versioning numbering, version numbering, uh, because it's, it was to show that this version was bringing a lot of features and uh, was kind of changing GMeter to make it more productive, better performing, more realistic in browser simulation, and things like that. So let's dive deeper in what uh, this uh, this version has brought. So first, as you know, uh, when you do a load testing campaign, you start scripting, then you run your test, and then you want to analyze it, uh, report, uh, make the report, and uh, and that and that's it. So uh, uh, the aim of this version was to improve every field, every every field of these three uh, steps. 
So uh, let's first talk about uh, the script building. So Uh, so when you the, the first thing when you build a script is to to make to make correlation and correlation uh, there are product commercial products that provide a feature called autocorrelation. In my uh, use of those uh, this feature, it was not always working very fine. Uh, so I'm still convinced that manual correlation today is still needed. And uh, it's still the best way to to build a realistic test plan and to know what you're doing, what you're simulating. So to do that, I always needed some way to search uh, in the request, in the response, in the headers for some particular ID that I had to inject in the next request for some particular data to extract, some particular data to assert, and I, I lacked. I like this feature in uh, previous Gmeter version. So this, this version brings this feature, and I will try to demo very. If you can give me the yeah, the switching over right now. So let's take uh, the su suppose here. I have recorded some traffic. As you know, with Gmeter, you to record your traffic uh, on an, on a web browser, you start using this feature. Um, I don't know if everybody know about this feature, but it's pretty nice to to start from from zero to and to record correctly. Okay. So this will create a test script recorder with a view result tree where you will get all the recording here. So suppose I have recording this. And I want now to, for example, uh, um, I want to know where this, where I can find this data here in this particular request. Yeah. So for, I suppose here people know about Gmeter, but if not, uh, uh, rapidly here is an HTTP request, and in the view result tree you can see uh, the response header, the request here with uh, the header, the, the method, uh, which can be post, get, put, etc., the parameters, and the request header. You can see them in a row way or in a formatted way. And uh, so let's say I want to find here, just give me a minute. So let's say I want to know where this data here came from. So uh, the, search, the new search feature is here. You, you put your, your data here. And uh, oh, it's not a good example. Sorry, just give me one minute. So let's say I have this ID here, which is the ID of a product. And I want to know where it came from. So I can see here that it was uh, search and it was in the search result here. Uh, here, product ID. And I will be able to find, if I'm at here, for example, to, to add to a cart this product, I would like to know where to find it in the previous request. I, I can know that I can find this request here. And uh, I can do that with every particular field. It can be a header, uh, a request parameter, a response data, and I'll be, uh, Gmeter will show me by highlighting in red every request that contains this data. And this way I'm then able to, to extract it and uh, I don't know if people uh, use, I, I suppose people use this feature, but if not, for example, you, you should know that you can test your regex or your CSS jQueries extractor by using those those things. So here, for example, I can test that with this with this expression. I'm able to 
extract, you see here, this particular ID. Mm -hmm. and, or I can use a CSS, which is uh, even a better way to, to extract some data. For example, I could extract the title here. You see, I can extract uh, the title. I can go deeper and select a particular regex. So that's a, that's uh, this feature. A nice so this feature exists uh, in previous version, but I don't see a lot of blogs on it. So I'm I'm pretty sure uh, using, for example, CSS jQuery makes your test much easier. You don't have to bother with regex, which can sometimes be counter performant. And it makes your test much more readable and easy to maintain. For example, I have a real world uh, test here, and uh, I've been using a lot uh, CSS. For example, here you can see that I can extract the first iframe tag uh, to extract a, a link to uh, to a particular URL that I will be using in next request. You see here, it's, this is a request I want to extract data from. I use a CSS query with a, a CSS uh, uh, expression, and I can inject then the, the value. So all this work is pretty simplified with the search feature that I've been highly using uh, since Jmeter 3 appeared. Another uh, nice feature I'd like to to demo here uh, is the Groovy integration and uh, is the, the progress we made in simplifying its usage in the in Gmeter. So let's uh, start with another plan. I have here, uh, I will be at using a GSR uh, 223 sampler and uh, out of the box now you, you have the option to select Groovy as a language. Why Groovy? Because Groovy is the first uh, great dynamic scripting language and it performs, it outperforms all available languages and particularly the old bean shell scripting language that was available and that is still available uh, in Gmeter but is available since years. It is no more maintained. Uh, it doesn't support the new Java syntaxes, so it was it was better to it's it, it's clearly better to switch to newer languages like Ruby. So uh, the particularity of GSR 223 is that uh, it allows you to use a lot of dynamic languages. You can see a few here. For example, you can use uh, Ruby, Java, Bean Shell, JavaScript, Jaxl. Etc. You can use GRuby, Jython, any scripting language that's, that has a GSR 223 integration. The particularity of uh, Groovy is that uh, it is it has a compilable it supports compilable interface, which makes it uh, the most performing language of all the ones available for Gmeter, and it clearly outperforms all other languages. I will demo it uh, in a few seconds. So the new feature here was to introduce this particular thing here, which is to make a compilation, cache compilation, much easier to use. In previous version, you had to, to enter a unique ID for you, your script, and I think it was maybe confusing to users and not easy to do. So now you don't have any more any excuse to not to use Gmeter, the Gmeter Groovy language. So uh, let's demo the, the 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 Groovy integration. So here I'll be making a sample benchmark. Uh, the first one will be will be running 20 threads and running 20,000 uh, iterations of this sampler, which uses Groovy and has compilation enabled and just ju that just computes. Or this, which gives you six, so it's not a big deal. I will do the same thing with another language that is, unfortunately, uh, very popular uh, in the Gmeter uh, around Gmeter users. And the same for Bean Shell. 
I say unfortunately because it it, uh, it brings down Jmeter performances. So uh, let's see how it, why I say this. So I'll disable, I first run the GUI version and then run the JavaScript version. Of course, I disable view result tree because I'm running here in a QE load test. It's uh, it's a it's a bad practice. It's just for demo. In real life, don't use GUI for load testing. So here, uh, I will just use the, the lightest uh, listener, which is a summary result, and that will just output here the result of my tests. So I I started. You see, it started and it's already finished. So I had here the generate summary result. So I computed 200,000 iteration in nine seconds with a huge throughput. As it's the first time, I will run it again. So uh, wh while that's running, um, some, someone asked uh, in in the questions, why not uh, why Java? Why not use Java instead of Groovy? What, what's you know, there's the performance benefit might even be stronger with Java over Groovy. Uh, what's the use case for using Groovy over Java? Because uh, it's much lighter to use Groovy than Java. When you want to use uh, Java, you have to extend uh, a particular uh, interface in Gmeter. You have to compile your project uh, by integrating uh, Gmeter jars. You have to build a jar and you have to put it in Gmeter. Mm -hmm. So you see there are a lot of steps, error prone, and uh, you, you will spend a lot of time doing this. If you use Groovy, it's just a matter of writing your code here and it's with clicking uh, this cache compilation you get nearly the same performances as a class compiled in Java. So, is do you see the benefit? Is it clear for you? I yeah, think I, for you, I, I, clear. I think you could do quite a bit. Um, I think that's clear. You know, and my my take was some some folks are more comfortable in Groovy as as a scripting language, but is it is is Java? In, in that mode, not a first-class citizen. Like you can't put any Java code straight in there that just runs. Well, you could, you can do it. As you can see, uh, there is here Java. You can select Java, but in fact, Java, as you can see, uses Bean Shell. So it's that it, it will not perform as good as uh, as Groovy here. We can try. We can do the same demo. You will get the same result. It's something like a, it's a factor of uh, uh, around, I think, uh, 100 it's more throughput than with uh, selecting this. But of course, if you build your own class and de deploy it into Gmeter lib extension, then you will get better performances. And this is the advised way if you don't want to, to make some Groovy. But I think Groovy has a lot of benefits. You have all the power of Java in a scripting language, plus the ability to pre-compile. Uh, so why why not use uh, Groovy in this case? Sure. Uh, I don't see anything which uh, which doesn't not justify using it. In fact, so, two, so here two items from the community. Uh, one, it one question. Another question is: Is the syntax for Groovy and Java Bean Shell the same? Uh, well. Uh, Clearly, it's at 95% uh, similar. I mean, if you have some bean shell code, you can put it in Ruby. It, it will work, except maybe for array. Uh, same for Java. If you can, of course, put Java code in the Groovy, and it will work. Uh, but you must know that uh, Groovy gives you even more than Java. Uh, it gives you a lot of libraries and utilities like, for example, JSON Slurper, uh, uh, GMX library, easy integration with GMX, and uh, I, I can't name all the libraries that you have to, and so this is really, uh, it brings you a lot of productivity during scripting if you use, if you have to use uh, Groovy. So while we spoke, I, I started 
the, the JavaScript version. And so you, you can see it's still running and it's eating, it was eating my CPU up to 100. And as you can see, uh, this is the throughput of, uh, of my version of the, the JavaScript version. It's around 1,600 samples per second, while the Groovy version has a throughput of 26,000 samplers per second. So as you see, the, the factor is huge, and that's why I wanted to, to advise the users listening to use always Groovy, and uh, because it's great language, it has now a great integration with Gmeter, and it clearly outperforms any other languages available the, 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 yes, the, the only so I I definitely agree Groovy over Bean Shell and, and I think someone someone in the question in in the question section it keeps pushing on this and I, and, and I think it's fair um, is that they they feel that the and they use it every day as well they still feel like just doing Java um, it will still have the faster performance we'll leave that for another for a follow up maybe and, and go through the details and try to vet that out. Um, but it, they're saying run the same test with just the Java, but you, you kind of pointed out that it's on Beanshell. We'll, we'll save that. Um, it's good feedback from the community, and maybe we'll follow up uh, with a, a, a small performance uh, report as well on that. Okay. So, let's get to the next topic. So another uh, interesting feature introduced in the version 3 is the validation feature. Uh, it, the idea started from uh, a blog I wrote, I wrote, I read on Gmeter. Uh, maybe users attending this have uh, read this uh, blog. It was called a Gmeter rant, uh, something yeah. like that. And it was, you, you, you've read it, I think. Yes. And uh, people can Google for it uh, very easily. And uh, so the idea came from my experience and the, reading this blog. Uh, the idea was to to validate. Well, let's let's start with the, the real test plan. So here I have a real test plan. Not this one. This big one. As you can see here, I've been uh, I developed three big uh, big scenarios. A visit, it's on like an, an e-commerce website, visit, ordering, and uh, account creation and navigation. So I've uh, sized every thread group with a particular number of threads, a ramp, etc. But uh, now I want to, to validate that for one user it will work nice and, and whenever I change something in my test plan, I want to be sure that my test plan is still working. Uh, so, uh, without this feature, you had to here change, always change your the, this, these fields, revert back when you want to load test, get back, change them to test again, and it was pretty annoying, and you lost uh, a lot of time. So, uh, this uh, the validation feature is very easy to use. It's just around you select the thread group and you run this validate. And what it provides is uh, different things. First, it will it lets you select that how many virtual users you will run during the validation feature. By uh, by uh, default, you will be running one user, but you can of course uh, tune this to whatever you want. So here, uh, here is the tuning of this feature. It's uh, in Gmeter properties. It's called test plan validation. So you can select the number of threads per thread group. You can select to ignore timers because, of course, nobody wants to to wait minutes or seconds just to validate that the test plan is running fine. Or note that you can also do that by clicking this button here, which ignores timers. But this is limited to timers, while this one does timers, number of users, number of iteration here. Here and uh, uh, with next upcoming version, when you use, for example, the percentage the throughput controller, 
in the percentage mode. Uh, uh, if you want to validate such a plan, you will have to run a lot of iteration to validate every fee, every element in it. Because if I have a 7% percentage of users entering this part of my test, then I have to run it at least 100 times to get seven, uh, seven people entering here. So to, to validate such a test plan, it would take me a lot of time. So to, to do that, you, in the next upcoming version, you will be able to force a 100% throughput in, so that you will enter in every part of this plan uh, without having to change all your values here. So uh, in, uh, in my feedback of this feature, it's bringing a lot of improvement in the scripting time you ta it takes to build a test plan. Uh, I hope this uh, part is clear for audience. So also, uh, other parts of uh, the scripting part was the introduction of Nashorn integration. For now, when you use GNeeder, first, uh, since version 3, you need to use a GDK 7. Uh, with GDK 7, the, the implementation will always be Reno. But with, if you use GNeeder 8, uh, by default, you will be using Nashorn, but you, will be, you would be using it only for uh, GSR, for example, for this one. You will be using, if I select JavaScript, as you can see here, we're using Oracle Nashorn. But whenever, I'm not, I don't know if people are aware of that, whenever you use a NIF controller and you unselect this checkbox, as you can see here, condition will be run using JavaScript. So uh, you, since Gmeter 3.0, you can select the, to this, uh, the JavaScript to run, to use uh, Nashorn instead of Reno, which performs much better. But uh, an advice I have to community is to, in fact, avoid using JavaScript and a, t a big tip uh, for scalability is to use, in fact, conditions with Jaxl here. And we introduced in this version Jaxl 3, which is very clear, greatly documented, and which has better performances. So for example, if I want to test a variable value, uh, I'll be doing it like this. So if I have a variable named test, and I want to, to test that its value is different from true, is equal to true, I can do it like this. You, you take this generation, it's uh, the code that the, the, this helper Jello generated, and you put it here. And in this way, you will avoid using JavaScript, and you will scale to a much higher level. The factor of scaling is, uh, is even better than what I show here. The, the using Jaxl 3 here will give you something like 100% more throughput than using uh, than not using Jaxl 3 here, and I'm checking this and using JavaScript here or Shell. So I highly advise user who want to make scalable test plan to use Jaxl 3 and to check this field. And now it's with 3.0, it's even easier. To, to use uh, Jaxl because it's, it's much better documented. That's why we introduced Jaxl 3. So let's switch now to, to another field. Uh, Richard, I, do you have maybe a question? I don't know. Um, there's no, uh, I don't have a, a question at this time, but we are uh, getting on close to the hour. I think if it's okay with you, there's so many good features and this is, and this is such uh, good content as you're, as you're drilling into each of these pieces. Um, and even the next section between the, the different, um, in the test running features, and then uh, in the test analysis feature of the new, um, the new dashboard that, that Rubik uh, launched and now Redline supports, and then s there's so much uh, pieces. I think if it's okay with you, we will we'll hold off on that and, and, and use that for the next one so, so the webinar isn't two, three hours long, uh, which, which I, I think we could go that long. 
So okay. uh, what, what I would like to end on is, and we don't have to go into the full details. We can actually, because what I'd love to end on is, what are you working on now? This is, you know, you told us about your start. You definitely, we touched a little bit on, on the JMeter 3.0, and we'll do more. We'll do, I promise everyone on, on the webinar, we're going to go even further uh, in this because it's just great content that I think a lot of folks, good, good chatter in the questions uh, as well as uh, um, feedback. The, but I, what I'd like to know is, what are you working on now? Uh, and, and you know, assuming you're using JMeter from a day-to-day -day perspective, what's your most recent project? Well, uh, the, the last project I've been working on was very interesting because uh, it's uh, it was a migration of a that of an e-commerce website from a data center to a new data center based on the cloud. Uh, to name it, it's uh, Soft Layer Cloud by IBM. Okay, and uh, it was pretty interesting uh, mission because uh, I, I had I it was the first time I was using in a real project, for example, an APM uh, Dynatrace. Uh, it was a very interesting uh, experience because I first had to integrate it with Gmeter, and maybe we can show that either now or in the next uh, webinar. Uh, and uh, it was really precious to see how these tools are useful for uh, microservices architecture or uh, SOA-based architectures because whenever you have a failure during the load test, you, it's, without this tool, you would spend a lot of time trying to find out what's the root cause of the, the failure of the, or of the response time degradation. Well, so it was uh, interesting in this field. It was also interesting because I usually use uh, Amazon Web Services Cloud to do uh, load testing in the cloud, it and uh, as you propose it with uh, Redline. And this time, it, I had to use another uh, European new cloud, which is a cloud by OVH, OVH. We, who is uh, one of the biggest hoster, worldwide hoster, and has who has started a new cloud offer, uh, which will be a worldwide offer, and uh, it was a bit different. I had to deal with uh, things like uh, uh, net IP routes and uh, uh, failover IPs. Uh, it's a concept similar to Elastic IPs of Amazon. Uh, I also had to deal with uh, VMware uh, architecture, so it was really a very interesting mission, and it, uh, hopefully it was a success. the migration seems to be a success, so it's good to see such results. So, uh, yeah, you know I like that stuff. I, I, always, I always ask uh, both Redline customers and, and anyone in the community, what are you working on? Uh, I, I, I've worked for software companies and, and, and real, com real companies, so to say, uh, that, deliver, that deliver goods to uh, people. And it's always interesting to me the projects people work on, uh, that that's where, because that's where the software that we build from, from, from Redline to JMeter to the communities, we build this stuff because, because of these projects, because of what people are trying to do. And, and so it, it's always very interesting t to me. And, and, but that, that leads to uh, two questions uh, from the community. Uh, and I think both tie back into this. So, and it, and it comes from building these projects and, and, and the, the learnings, the best practices you gain from them, as well as the interactions you have with other people. So question one, uh, in this, do you see a lot of usage for, on QA teams? You're, you're a developer and a performance engineer. Do you work with QA teams and JMeter, and how do they make it work for them? Can you be a QA developer, QA, not developer, a QA person, uh, and, and get into JMeter? What's your thoughts on that? Uh, yes, I, I had to, to work with QA uh, uh, as we, we do trainings around JMeter. We train uh, QA people, and uh, we have uh, been seeing recently a lot of people, for example, migrating from HP Load Runner to Gmeter, 
and uh, uh, well, they see the tool a bit differently. I think for people coming from uh, HP, it's a bit hardcore maybe at first sight. Uh, you need to understand more things like protocol, uh, low level things like protocol, headers, uh, request, uh, method, etc. Session. Uh, but I, I see that uh, people are, uh, thanks to all the resources that have been created recently with all the the, the SaaS uh, cloud offers, uh, I see that people are are getting to know it rather easily, and uh, even people who don't have a developer background can find uh, resources and are able to manage their, uh, to do their job with, uh, with GMaker. Uh, at first, maybe in a little less productive way, but uh, starting uh, with uh, the, I mean, the learning curve is maybe a bit harder than GMaker, than uh, HP Learner. But what I'm sure is that whenever you get to know it, you, it will be much easier to customize it and to, to do some special things uh, like, I, in fact, in all my mission, I always had to do some what I call special things like extract data in a particular way, which led me to use Groovy and uh, Bean Shell. Uh, well, um, this, is, this was hard to do with uh, HP Loadrunner and other tools. While it's it's very easy with GMeter, and there are a lot of resources. So I think, from my experience with QAs, it is it is uh, it is gaining popularity, and uh, with the improvement made in across every version, and particularly in the reporting field, I'm pretty sure it will even gain higher prior popularity. And uh, I mean, you can see. Uh, the indicators I have on its popularity seems to confirm that yeah. uh, because I see uh, a lot of integration from uh, cloud offers, a lot of resources, a lot of logs. So I think people are interested in, in knowing it better and particularly QA people, not, not only dev, development people. And because you must see, I think for a QA, GMeter has something better than some other open source offers. It's, it has an IDE for script development, which lacks some other solutions. Its GUI uh, makes it a very productive environment for scripting, and thanks to the report now, I think it's a full featured solution. I like that. Uh, and, and, and yet another topic I, I, we can dive into uh, much deeper. I spend uh, uh, quite a few, quite quite a bit of time with uh, QA folks uh, on this topic as well. Uh, last question uh, uh, from the community: uh, what, what are what are the the check? Your, what is your checklist for optimizing your scripts for, for optimizing your test plans? Uh, so, sorry, Richard. What do you mean by checklist? What, what is, your best practices when you when you're about to um, when you built the, the the test plan for, uh, for for your latest project you've done this multiple times you know do you have your own checklist for you know for someone that's new into JMeter they're going to have to go through this all from the beginning and learn these pieces it's hard to digest uh, for them to begin to you know they might not be at optimizing their JMeter tests. What's your checklist for optimizing your JMeter test? You know, the most simplest one that every, I think everyone in JMeter learns quickly is don't run your production load test in the GUI. <laughs> That's a simple yeah. one. But maybe you have a, a little bit better of a list. Yes. Uh, well, uh, I there are some common mistakes, I would say. First, uh, always put, always use response assertions uh, for every request to be sure that what you get is really what you expect and not just uh, a, a narrow page that ha that gives you a 200 uh, response code. Uh, it will make you think that your response is okay while it's a bad response. Uh, another thing is to, to use timers correctly. One of the biggest mistakes people make when starting with GMeter is to use the timer and think that it applies only to the place where it is put 
while in fact it applies to uh, the scope where it where it is placed. So whenever you put, for example, does this does it, uh, do I understand your question correctly, Richard? Or you yeah, want to... uh, it's from the community, but I, I think that's in, in in the right vein. I think it's and you know this the. the it, I mean, it might even be a good one for a separate blog post, which is, um, uh, you know, what, what is your, how do you go about optimizing your scripts in this, and, and so using assertions and, and all the other pieces um, okay. would be good, great to document. These become people's best practices because you've learned these things. So if you had to train other people, you know, what, what, and they're going off to, to do this, if you have sending someone else from your team to a different client and, and they say to you, Philip, tell me what I should know about JMeter so I, I, I make the test effective and worthwhile. You would give them, a, you know, uh, a list. That's what this list. That's what I think. That's what this uh, user means by that. Okay. So, if this is a question, then my previous answer I think was okay. So, yes. if you think about timers, for example, here we use, for example, this timer will will work. Only for at this place because why why will it do this because here we use a test action where we put a pose to zero and we put in it a timer. If you put this timer here, well it will apply here before this one before this one before this one before this one before this one. You see, so it doesn't it does apply to the scope uh, where it is placed. While if you put it here, you limit this. Uh, execution to the scope to its scope length. It's the, the next big thing, big thing, and which which makes your test uh, unscalable is the, the the one I gave before, which is uh, the if controller. D don't use if controller with JavaScript. Uh, regarding assertions, uh, yes, one of the tip you often have to to reuse code around Gmeter. For example, the login the home page, the connection here, and to, to instead of coding it and duplicate your code everywhere, you can use uh, a combination of module controller and the target controller, which can be a simple controller, where you place your code here. And you, you can reuse this part of code everywhere. Uh, you can use it here, here, without recoding and duplicating the code. Uh, another thing is when you start with Gmeter, but I think it's the same uh, advice for every user. Always try to be realis realistic in your simulation. Use correlation and variables. And my tip is to use the new components from Gmeter, the CSS jQuery I spoke about, and not regex, and not always regex, because regex make your load test less your script less maintainable and sometimes less efficient because regex can have dramatic performances if it's badly badly built so here are some of my tips uh, I would say perfect so um, I, I think I think that's great I think I, you know I, I think we, we can't I don't think we could spend the next hour extracting all that information from you because uh, I think it would be quite a bit so uh, on on that note, I'm going to leave it on the the, uh, the summary page um, for questions and contact. You, this is all Philippe's uh, and, and Ubik and Janeri, uh contact information. Uh, of course, Redline's information at redline13.com. Uh, we thank everybody for uh, um, being on the webinar uh, and uh, Philippe, great. Uh, Great first time webinar for you, uh, but so much more. Uh, and I look forward to uh, uh, drilling further into JMeter 3.0 and talking about JMeter futures a a as we go forward. But gr great information, and I hope uh, uh, I'm sure this was valuable to quite a few different folks. So thanks again. Thank you, Richard. Very, very nice to to chat with you around this. Great. Uh, take care. Bye.